to Surat Al-Anfal. Uh, right away with Surat Al-Tawbah, uh, the, the most glaring thing about it is that it does not have Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim That the Basmala is missing in front of Surah At-Tawbah, the Surah of Repentance. Some people would say that that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is angry in the Surah. So there's a lot of anger in the Surah and that's why the Basmala is not there. But that's actually a problem. You know, that's a problematic way of looking at things. Instead, we have an authentic narration in Tirmidhi that the reason being... Uh, the reason why at tawbah and Al-Anfal are not separated by a Bismillah, the reason why there is no Bismillah Rahman Rahim in front of Surah At-Tawbah is that, the, that, that many of the companions thought that Al-Anfal and at tawbah were actually one Surah together. So they definitely are in order the right way, but there's, there's a thinking that it could be that Surah At-Tawbah is, is a continuation of Surah Al-Anfal. And many of the Sahaba, you know, the majority of the Sahaba that obviously said it's a separate surah in and of itself, they said that it's a continuation though of Al-Anfal. So the Prophet ﷺ did not recite the Basmala between the two. It continues into, um, it continues into, uh, into Surah At-Tawbah the way, with the same uh, discussion that it was in uh, Surah Al-Anfal. So there's no Basmala because Surah At-Tawbah is a continuation of Surah Al-Anfal. That's the reason being. Is it revealed in the same time period? No. Surah Al-Anfal is after Badr. Surah At-Tawbah is after, uh, after the expedition of Tabuk. So Surah At-Tawbah in its entirety is the second to last surah that was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. The last surah that was in entirely revealed to the Prophet ﷺ was إِذَا جَاءَ نَصُّ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا so the last surah, Surah Al-Nasr, is the, the announcement of the death of the Prophet ﷺ in saying that the victory of Allah has come. You see people accepting Islam in, in huge waves. So glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness. And Allah is tawaba. Allah is the acceptor of repentance. That's the last surah. So the last verse that in, in the last surah that was revealed is إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the acceptor of repentance. The second to last surah that was revealed in entirety is Surah At-Tawbah, which is the repentance. So it invites people back to repentance. It invites, uh, you know, it, it's a demand of people to make repentance for uh, turning back on the treaties, uh, the hypocrites that would betray the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and betray the believers and so on and so forth. So Surah At-Tawbah is revealed after Tabuk. This is the ninth year after Hijrah. To give you some context, Tabuk comes after the conquest of Mecca. So the Muslims now have established themselves um, really in the region. And uh, the, the news came from Tabuk, from the area of Tabuk. Tabuk is next to the Jordan border. So uh, the Jordan border, basically Jordan back then was considered part of Bilad al-Sham. So it was considered part of a sham collectively. So the Jordan border, so greater Syria, if you will, the Jordan border is where the Byzantines were. And the Byzantines were scouting out Tabuk, the area of Tabuk, which was that area of Arabia, to attack the Prophet ﷺ and to attack the believers. So the message got to the Prophet ﷺ and it got to the believers that they were on the move, that the Byzantines were on the move to the, to the, uh, to the area of Tabuk and this became extremely problematic now because they just, subhanAllah, it was summer, it was hot. They just finished the conquest of Mecca and the Hajj. All, you know, this is the worst possible time to have a major battle, right? And a battle with a huge superpower, the, a, a world superpower coming to fight you. So the Prophet ﷺ started to gather the believers together to go out to Tabuk and to meet that army. And he was able to garner, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 30,000 people. Now it shows you the size of the ummah at the time, that 30,000 people was excluding a ton of hypocrites that made excuses to not go out with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the idea here is that the treaties were broken by some of the other tribes with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The treaty was broken uh, you know, in a way that the Prophet ﷺ would now have to worry about those that broke the treaty. And you also had hypocrites within Medina, within the Ummah, that did not want to go out with the Prophet ﷺ because, you know, they feared the outcome. So they started to make their excuses. And not only did they start to make their excuses to the Prophet ﷺ for not going out, 
but they started to pollute uh, those that were going out and they started to go to other people and say la tanfiru fil har don't go out in the heat and so on and so forth so there was a fear of their uh, of their dunya right there was a fear of losing out on their world and so on and so forth and because of that they they actually affected the morale of the entire uh, army of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as they would go out to tabuk so this is really a wartime surah it's a heavy heavy surah on the hypocrites why does it connect to al anfal because al anfa basically highlights from a spiritual perspective that if you're steadfast and if you're upon that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to be upon no matter how small your number is you will always be able to overcome the other side so even if you have a small number Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory so al anfa establishes that al anfa also establishes the treaties so now you have a situation where the treaties are being broken right so at tauba sort of it, it continues along with uh, surah al anfal in that sense so verse 4 verse 4 of surah at tauba condemns those who broke the treaty okay verse 5 of surah at tauba is the islamophobes uh, favorite verse which is the verse that says to kill them wherever you find them so so subhanallah you take you take a very specific ayah which clearly is talking about going after those who broke the treaties and going to Tabuk and fighting you know this huge army and so on and so forth that's infringing upon your territory clearly it's talking about a particular wartime context by the verse that came before and you generalize the verse so uh, verse 5 comes right after the verse which talks about those who broke the treaties and those are the ones to be attacked and those are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says uh, that once al ashhur al haram uh, al hurum the, the sacred months have passed faqtul al mushrikeen haythu wajadtumuhum then kill the disbelievers wherever you find them so clearly if this was a general verse kill the disbelievers wherever you find them then the first person to act upon that verse would have been the prophet sallallahu but instead you had non muslims that continued to live under his protection and you had different non-Muslim nations and tribes that had treaties with the Prophet Sallallahu that were not broken and the Prophet Sallallahu upheld those treaties. So verse 5 is referring to the, those that broke the treaties um, and, and, uh, and those that infringed upon the Muslims in this situation. Now by the way, an interesting thing about Surah at tawbah an interesting thing about Tabuk is that when, the, when they actually made it to Tabuk, what ended up being the case, subhanAllah, is that you know the Byzantines had, had already retreated. They heard about the 30,000 that were coming and they already retreated. So no battle actually took place in Tabuk. So it was purely one to be drawn for lessons, okay? For people to actually think about their situation, for people to reconsider, for those that went out with the Prophet to be given their glad tidings, for those that broke the treaties to be warned, for the hypocrites that held back and that, that corrupted the morale and gave false excuses to be warned. So Tabuk never resulted in an actual battle, but it was still a mighty expedition. It was a ghazwa um, in that sense. So you have, um, you know, verse 25. If you go to verse 25, you really see a connection from Badr to Hunayn, right? The message where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you victory in many different situations. In many different situations. But here Allah mentions, وَيَوْمَ Hunain And the day of Hunain. So you actually learn a lot about battles within the surah. So you had Badr, you had Uhud, you had Khandaq, you had, those are the famous battles, right? Uh, Tabuk and Hunain come in the same context. It's after the conquest of Mecca. It's after the Muslims are established now. Hunayn represents some of the other tribes coming from the area of Taqif that came to attack the Prophet and wanted to ambush. So you had a group of tribes that broke the treaty and that were waging war on the Prophet and Hunayn was a very, very difficult battle, right? It was a very difficult battle, even though the Muslims outnumbered the other side. It was a very difficult ghazwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that Allah has supported you and given you victory when your numbers were less than your enemy. But if you look at Hunayn, إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ فَلَمْ تُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا Your numbers amazed you. I mean, you thought that because you were much bigger than the opposing army that you would easily, easily uh, you know, go through Hunayn. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He gave you victory anyway, right? But it was a difficult situation for you. It wasn't easy. Things did not come easy in, uh, in Hunayn. So uh, you really have an interesting situation here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the idea of, you know, it's not about the numbers that you have so long as you stick with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you stick with the treaty and you stick with the things that Allah has mentioned for you and you remain steadfast, Allah will protect you. In verse 37, if we fast forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the people that played around with the sacred months when it came to, to, uh, to war. The sacred months, which are the Qa'da, the Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. These are the sacred months. Uh, and there was an agreement that there's that these are sanctified months and people would not fight in these months. What they would do, what the disbelievers would do, is they would shift around these months. So they delay a month or they'd bring forth a month or whatever it is in order to uh, strategize when it came to their fighting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that you uphold the sacred months all the time. So you maintain the ethics of battle in all times. And you find, subhanAllah, in verse 40, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the situation with Abu Bakr is mentioned, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is with Abu Bakr in a cave. And the way that this starts off, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ If you don't support the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, God has already supported him. Allah has already supported him. What is this referring to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to everyone, remember when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was driven out of Mecca? Remember when he was a fugitive? Remember when they put a bounty on his head? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with his companion, was with Abu Bakr in the cave. And they were at the mouth of that cave. And they were ready to, you know, to, if they would have found them, Allah knows how they would have mutilated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, mu and, and mutilated Abu Bakr. But the Prophet sallallahu he says to his companion Abu Bakr, لا تحزن إن الله معنا Don't grieve, Allah is with us. Don't grieve, Allah is with us. So the idea here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning how the Prophet sallallahu and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu were together and Allah was with them against this entire you know, onslaught. And so if Allah helped them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayyaduhu bi junudin lam tarawha. Allah has helped him with soldiers that you don't see. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put peace in the heart of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu and tranquility. Why? Because they knew that Allah was with them. So Allah mentions this in verse 40, but then the opposite. So Abu Bakr went out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he stood with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the most difficult time of his life. Verse 42, just two ayat later, Allah mentions the hypocrites who came to the Prophet ﷺ with their lame excuses. And they swore to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They swore by Allah. They said that if we were able, لو استطعنا, if we were able, لخرجنا معكم. We would have been with you. We would have fought by your side and so on and so forth. And Allah exposes their false intentions and their false oaths. So Abu Bakr was truthful in standing with the Prophet ﷺ in a time when no one was with him. And these hypocrites are not truthful. They're lying and they're making false oaths about what their intentions are when, uh, when there's an entire army to stand with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then in verse 51, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That say that never will, will, will we be struck except by what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector and upon Allah, uh, let the believers rely. So this reinstate, this restating of tawakkul, this restating of staying firm, no matter what happens, no matter what uh, the size of the army against you is. And Allah mentions in verse 55, uh, uh, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So let not their wealth and their children impress you. This is a message to all of us. When you see someone who seemingly has an easy life and seemingly has much money and seemingly has much children, but they don't have a purpose, they don't have guidance, don't be impressed by that. Those things are actually a punishment for them. So don't be overwhelmed or amused by those things. Those things actually serve as a punishment for them. So subhanAllah, it's a reminder to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and a reminder to the believers. Don't look to those that are standing back and don't look to those that... that, that are you know are, are forsaking purpose and forsaking guidance and 
and you think that, wow, you know, why are they so comfortable? Why this? Why that? Instead, focus on the purpose that's been given to you. Remain steadfast on that purpose. And uh, the aid of Allah will always uh, come. And Allah mentions in, in verse 64 that the hypocrites, in verse 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this, that the hypocrites, يَحْذَرُ uh, الْمُنَافِقُونَ That they are afraid, they're apprehensive about a surah that is going to be revealed about them. So they know that, that a surah would be revealed about them that would inform the evil in their hearts and that would expose them uh, and expose the hypocrisy within them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making clear that this surah is about those hypocrites. And then finally, I'll go through these last two things. I know we're a little bit over time. In verse 75 and verse 76, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and this is a very, very, very beautiful and important um, you know, connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ أَتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ وَنَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ That amongst them are, are those who made a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that said that if Allah was to give us from His bounty, لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ uh, We will give charity all the time. وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ, مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we will be from the righteous. And basically what this is talking about is a person before Allah gives them ease and before Allah gives them bounty and before Allah gives them money and so on and so forth. A lot of us in our moments of vulnerability, we make promises to Allah. We say, oh Allah, if you put us in a position to do good, we're gonna do lots of good. If you put me through this, this med school or you get me through this, or you, you, know, you make me rich and wealthy, you get me this promotion, then I'm going to give a lot of charity. So a lot of people in their moments of vulnerability, they make promises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they're insincere to those promises. فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them what they said that they wanted, بَخِلُوا بِهِ Then they became stingy with the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them. وَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ And they turned away uh, you know, while they refused to give and while they refused to sacrifice. So Allah mentions, it's very easy for you to make promises when you're vulnerable. But it's very hard to fulfill those promises when time comes to pass. And this is the situation here that's being highlighted. So these are people that, uh, that made promises that if we're, if we're put in a good situation, then we're going to sacrifice and give for the sake of Allah. The last verse of this juz, which is verse 92, refers to the opposite scenario. The first person that we just referred to is a person who has who promised that he would give, and when he got there, he didn't give, even though he had the, the, the capability of giving. This situation, the last verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that there is no blame upon those that came to you, so that, they could, so that they could come with you, so that you could give them mounts, and they did not have anything to carry themselves. So there were two people that came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they had nothing to go out and support with the Prophet ﷺ with. They had no mounts, they had no money, they could not even find anything to ride upon, and the Prophet ﷺ could not find anything for them to ride upon either. So basically, these were two people that were very sincere to the Prophet ﷺ, that were very sincere to Allah, that wanted to be with the Prophet ﷺ, that wanted to go out on Tabuk, but they had nothing to, be, to carry them, they were unable to go out, and they were legitimately unable to go out, but they had the intention to. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That they turned away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And their eyes were full of tears out of grief. They, you know, they were so sad that they could not give for the sake of Allah. And they could not uh, be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were so sad. You know, it's like that person that's sitting in the fundraiser and he's like, if I had the money, wallahi I would give. Wallahi I'd give to this cause. And he's sincere in that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never put him in that position. But he's really sincere in that. So Allah mentions there's no blame on that person. What is the, the lesson here? إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That actions are but by intention. If you are sincere, Allah knows what you would do if He gave you. And if Allah has given you and put you in that situation, make sure you live up to what you promised Him and what you intended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you at times with hardship and with ease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test your sincerity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sincerity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that genuinely love to do good with what He's given us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us amongst those that are deluded 
by the material things of this world and the ease of this world. I'm sorry we went a little bit over time today. Jazakumullahu uh, khairan, barakallahu li wa lakum. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, I will uh, see you guys tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi